The celebrities you idolize are not better than you. They eat because of you. They have a nice place to live because of you. And they have a sense of self-worth, identity, and self-esteem oftentimes because of the way you acknowledge them. Why do you put them on a pedestal? Why do you idolize them? The reason you're so drawn to the celebrities you love is because they have aspects within themselves that you already possess. And that way they've resonated. And in that sense, you acknowledge that part you already have within them. It's like a mirror. But what I don't understand, what I kind of, what really upsets me in a sense is why so many people act like these celebrities are so far above them. When you think of the word fan, what does the word fan mean? It is an abbreviation of fanatic. What does the word fanatic mean? Come on, if you're watching this channel, if you're here with me right now, I know you have, you have a brain, to say the very least. Fanatic, what do you associate with the word fanatic? Desperation, neediness, obsession? Listen, I consider myself no one's fan in this life or in any for that matter, bless my heart. Um, I don't consider myself to be a fan of anyone or anything. The only fan, the only entity to whom I consider myself a fan is my highest realized self. I'm fanatically devoted to that realization of myself. And I wish that for you, honestly. I am no one's fan. However, I am a great admirer of many men and women who have come before me and who live simultaneously on this earth with me, who have done great things, who have broken through the paths and barriers that we can, like, we can't even really comprehend from our perspective. And it's up to us to find these people with whom we resonate with whom we share passions, talents, and interests to learn from them and learn from how they broke through their paths. That is how you use a celebrity, okay? Stop worshiping celebrities, putting them on a pedestal, throwing your money, attention, and life force away at them, and actually understand what they're there for. They are your mirrors to see where you have these amazing qualities and can actually amplify from learning what they did and how they embody it themselves. The thing with celebrities is that not everyone, just saying from like a factual observation, not everyone on this earth has at this very moment the courage, the bravery, and the privileges and skills, sorry, that was a notification, to go through um, and fully realize like the brightest, most confident, outgoing version of themselves. And not everyone is destined to be a celebrity. And it doesn't mean you're more or less valuable, okay? I'm just saying, use these figures who have succeeded in the fields you're interested in and use them as like a mirror and a blueprint to how you can get there. Don't see them as some holy entity that's so far above you. Listen, I have been to two pop concerts in my lifetime. One was for Kendrick Lamar in Paris when I was around 20 years old. And the other one was for Lana Del Rey in Antwerp. Yes, I know, your girl has great taste. But even then, even for Kendrick Lamar and even for Lana Del Rey, I felt weird going to those huge concert arenas. I felt icky because I knew that you kind of putting yourself in an energy harvesting environment. And I'm saying this um, and fully knowing that some people, they thrive in those like big crowds and environments and you can actually get energy from that. So if that is you, keep doing what you're doing. Great for you. I'm so happy for you. But for me and for anyone else who feels like me, who like feels drained from these heavy crowded environments and who's like sensitive to energy, I could tell an arena is an energy harvesting platform. 
it's similar to social media from a technological basis, except you're in a physical area. An arena is just harvesting the energy of thousands of people into one concentrated focus point, which is that celebrity. And what's reflective of that? That energetic cord is reflective of the funneling of money, attention, and power or influence towards one single entity or brand or celebrity in that sense. So I always knew that I am comfortable being at the center of attention. Not everyone is destined for that. Other people have other skills that I will never possess. And that is fine. I accept the skills I have and I am devoted to amplifying and following those channels so that I can be the best version of myself. I'm not trying to be anyone else and neither should you. So how do you use a celebrity to improve yourself instead of just like brainlessly throwing away your hard-earned money, your valuable time, attention, and resources to enrich another organization, whether it be that specific celebrity or what they represent as like a company or brand. I want you to think of all of the people of influence and whatever you consider success and position so the celebrities and the feel that you care about. Who are these people? And then I want you to think about the qualities that they have and the unique combinations of those skills because the combination itself is essential. How they use their skills and the opportunities they have within the context of their environment and time period to advance themselves. Because when they are able to advance themselves, they maximize the amplitude of their personal skills and influence. And when you advance yourself, maximize your skill set, you're benefiting the largest amount of people in whatever role you're serving in the natural order or natural harmony of the world. What's not beneficial, let me tell you, this is where the Americans, I feel, American culture is kind of fucked up. American culture is great in the sense that compared to Europeans, I've lived like everywhere almost. Americans are more happy for you if you succeed. But at the same time, the disparity and the haves and haves nots is so extreme that it's really unhealthy. So with every culture you go into, with every environment you go into, you've got to take a little evaluation of what's going for it and what's going against it and whether that suits what you want out of life or not. And then you choose your environment accordingly because you have so much influence of your environment. That's true. But beyond a certain point, you need to do what's best for you. You need to go where you are valued and appreciated. So celebrities, find how the people you admire made the best of their situations so that they could make their skill set, which I presume you've harmonized with, you resonate with. So who are the people I admire? Who are the celebrities I admire? Let's take a little case study, okay? How do I do this for myself? How do I worship or how do I worship the best version of myself by using celebrities? I don't put anyone or anything on a pedestal because anyone or anything that's on a pedestal makes me inherently in a position of inferiority and subjugation. I am not about that life, okay? I am going to look at the people who are more advanced. And let me put it this way. When you look at a celebrity or person in your field of choice who is like, in a sense, far ahead of you, I don't want you to see it as a pyramid. So what's interesting is I heard recently in conversation that Georges Bataille, the French author, he had this concept of the, um, the fact that there are two, he observed there are two types of people living through the world. And one group of people are living in a pyramidal system and the other group of people are living in a labyrinthal system. I found this fascinating. So let me show you how you take a celebrity or person of influence and you analyze them for your benefit. This is how you do it. Every time you see someone who is supposedly ahead or above you um, on a trajectory of where you want to go, don't think of it in a like height order, in the advancement of like, he's up there, she's up there, and I'm down here. Don't think of it like that. 
go into a space. I want you to clear this visualization exercise to a place without space and time. Okay, so there's no hierarchy. You are aligning yourself to a path that is at least as high as where that person got. Because that person, that celebrity, that person of influence in whatever uh, career or field you are interested in, that person is not above you inherently. The fact is that you are on your own life trajectory. And that other person, presumably if they're older than you or if they're living in another environment compared to you, they are on their own life path their own trajectory and they have simply reached another point of this trajectory that is above where you currently are it's not that their entire life and soul and being is superior to yours it's that you two are both on different life paths and that person has simply advanced further than you it's not that they're inherently superior to you you can also advance just as far as that person or even further, okay? That's why I want you to never feel desperate or pressed for time. It is great to have a sense of urgency and motivation or like fire up your ass if that works for you. Keyword, use advice that works for you. Don't just take random advice, okay? Take what resonates and leaves the rest. leave the rest. So disregard a hierarchy, And simply look at whoever you're admiring as a person who has gone further up along the trajectory of their life path compared to you and know that you are capable of doing at least as much or even more. Or heck, you're not obliged to go to the same life or the same outcome as another person. Just use that as inspiration. Use their light, their force to help pull you up. Because a lot of us, we've gone through challenges and we share information in our own lives without even like broadcasting it, sets an example for others. So those celebrities that you can access through attention and their fame, they have like a guidebook to how they live their life just from learning about them, like what they're like, what their lives are like, what they went through in life. You have playbooks to different archetypes of reality that you can use for yourself. Let me give you an example now. Like It's time to get personal. My favorite actress of all time is Elizabeth Taylor. Why? I think she has such a magnetic aura. She has so much sexual power. She's an absolute siren. And I just know that she doesn't finish her food if she doesn't feel like finishing it. I just know that if a jewel or a bespoke piece of jewelry isn't exactly to her liking, she's not going to feel obliged to buy it or wear it. She almost made MGM Studios go broke when she filmed Cleopatra because she wanted the set to be as fucking glorious as it was. I admire her because I see myself in the way she's lived her life. And another thing I've noticed, funny enough, is that a lot of these celebrities I admire, they've actually passed away. Um, For example, uh, Wallace Simpson, Duchess of Windsor, who made, she didn't make, she actually didn't want this to happen, but uh, Edward, uh, King Edward, he gave up the throne, forgot whichever number it was, but he gave up the throne just to be with her. And she has survived abusive, an abusive husband, um, lots of infidelity. She was born in like a pretty humble uh, wooden house in Pennsylvania. She was divorced. People like love talking smack about her. Like the whole press hated her. Um, I admire a lot of people who are largely self-made, who have qualities of personal power, especially through a feminine point of view. I've looked through their lives. I've read about their lives and how they operated through their challenges. And tell me I am not harvesting a little bit of their consciousness 
and their personality every time I interact with a piece of their history, whether it be through a biography, through a film, or through learning about them. You know what I don't do? I don't put them in my mind as some superior entity that I have to worship or funnel my energy towards so that they can benefit from it. I think part of it subconsciously, the fact that it, I adore these dead men and women is because they can't like profit off of me. But also I remember lots of past lives, like those eras. But the main point is I'm not a massive fan of anyone or any living celebrity because no one deserves my attention or energy like that. I don't put any of these celebrities on a pedestal above myself because I am not a fanatic for anyone <laughs> except the highest outcome that I can do for myself, that I can embody for myself. So here's an exercise you can do. Similar to what I just described to you, write down a list of the people you really admire. This can be from your personal life or from the career path you've chosen or certain celebrities that you just find, oh, I, I don't can't, sometimes you can't even put it into words, but you just find them so cool. Like, they feel like another version of yourself. You see yourself in them. That's literally what's happening. And then like factually, logically write down the very qualities that you admire so much in these people. Your admiration your, is a form of passion and your passion is leading you to an answer. You might not even know what the question is. You might not have formulated it in your brain yet. But your passion is leading you towards some answer that you need. And in this context, noting who and what you're passionate about, maybe it's a celebrity, so-called celebrity, write down what they like. Is it their sense of style? Is it their confidence? Is it their magnetic aura? Is it the way they overcame their childhood challenges? Um, is it the way they can present themselves? Is it the way they handle a tough situation? Is it the way they are so graceful and able to mm, diffuse situations that could be potentially hazardous? Dolly Parton, every time I'm about to rage or I feel like someone might piss me off, I think of Dolly Parton. See, so many people hate on her for her looks, for how she is, and she does not take any of it to heart. There's this iconic moment of Dolly Parton on a Barbara Walters interview where she's like very, you know how interviewers to get a juicy reaction out of a celebrity, they will go bait them with some thinly veiled but disrespectful question. So Barbara Walters, she was asking Dolly Parton about like, hmm, like don't you get judged for your appearance or something that was like undermining her appearance. And Dolly Parton, she has a great sense of humor. She used humor to diffuse that situation. I freaking love that because no one is getting under her skin. Anyone who gets under your skin has some form of power over you because anytime anyone or anything gets an emotional reaction out of you, they are forming a karmic bond. They're forming a little tie towards you. And you accept that tie when you react because a karmic tie or connection is never one-sided. You have to react in some way in order to acknowledge its presence and accept the connection. And when you make that emotional reaction, you accept the connection and you tie yourself to someone, whether you like it or not. That is why emotional self-regulation is so valuable. But anyways, back on the subject of celebrities. Understand that these people... <laughs> that you put on a pedestal, that you worship. Listen, I am a fan of no one. I do not put anyone on a pedestal. If I admire someone, I just say I'm a great admirer of X, Y, Z, of this person, of what they did. I admire so many people in my daily life. Throughout history, in contemporary society, people I've never met, I admire them so much. But you know the difference between being a fan and being an admirer? Being an admirer, you actually, there's a sense of integrity, personal integrity and self-respect. Being a fanatic, that is icky. That is icky as fuck. No, honey, you are better than that. You are no one's fanatic except for your higher self. That is the only obligation you have to be a fanatic, to be hopelessly devoted, to be willing to give it all up, to be that best version of yourself. 
because when you empower yourself you are like you're giving permission slips for other people to behave that way as well and so many people go through life being fearful to step out into the light or um, put themselves in a place where they're truly valued for what they are passionate about and who they are you have only the single obligation to be a fan to be that version of yourself and being a so being a fan towards a celebrity that's that might not get you the satisfaction and fulfillment that you really want and you're looking for. So these celebrities, they're literally your servants. They make music for you to enjoy throughout the day, whether you're commuting or you're cooking dinner. They provide a service for you. They are not superior to you. Get it through your head, honey. Like... Even in the comments I get now, I love them so much. But I want to light a little light that you have inside of you already. It's not that anyone you're watching on TV or on social media, these influencers, they're not better than you at all on a soul level. Let me tell you something that's going to blow your mind a bit. One thing that might happen when you have a spiritual awakening or when you start being confident enough to be yourself and do what you want in your life, one thing that might happen in the early stages is your ego gets inflated. You think, ah, yeah, so many people admire me. I am the shit. I am better than everyone because I know things. I see things. Honey, shh. I had to tell this to myself. I am not better than anyone. But you know what? I'm not inferior to anyone. I know. I am fully aware that I am an app, I am absolutely special. I'm fucking talented. I am irreplaceable. I have skill sets that no one will ever be able to replace. Um, that are actually like very hard to replace. Let's just put it that way. However, on a soul level, my being is not worth a damn penny more or less than any other soul on this earth. But I hold that knowledge simultaneously while understanding that I'm very special and so is everyone else. You just need to acknowledge that. So the same goes with like celebrity culture, with fame, with anyone that you so-called look up to. What does the word look up to mean? If you want to interact or network or befriend a celebrity or someone who you want to learn from, I also suggest you don't send them a message or inquiry from a place of inferiority. Like, oh my God, you're so cool. Blah, blah, blah. Talk to them. If you're going to like cold call or in this age, I guess, slide into someone's DMs, speak to them with a sense of, I want to become your friend. Don't speak them to them from a sense of like, you are so much better than me. And I just want to like spend a little few seconds with you. Because people only like... Listen, people of a certain level, they only interact if it's beneficial to them. And then they, and then people at a certain level, they only interact in situations or do things that will benefit them. And it's not one sided. It's not selfish. Oftentimes, the more authentic you are, you go into partnerships and interactions that are mutually beneficial. Okay. So it's not a bad thing, but, um, if you ever want to like interact it's like sign to someone's dms or like ask from like both perspectives just keep a sense of respect but know that no one is superior to you in that way you can show deference you can show respect but have personal integrity have self-respect and um know that no celebrity no public figure is like worth more than you even if in our current modern day culture the word the net worth or like all that stuff is very ingrained in our minds. It's only used to control people. Yeah, so I'm going to stop it here for today. This is how I want you to use celebrities and the people you admire to your benefit. Because they are your servants. If they have a public platform, um, they are benefiting from that. And they are servicing you. They are serving you. Pardon. They are serving you. Know how to recognize that and use it to your advantage. Don't spend your life away living vicariously through them or letting them live out your life for you. That is another issue I find with influencers and um, celebrities, especially in like American culture. Sometimes you don't feel comfortable 
living the life you truly want so that's why like the kardashians are so popular like reality tv can be so popular people on screen they'll say shit that you don't have the courage to say they'll do things that you think you never can but plot twist if you put yourself through it and you really really want it you can live a life where you get to say what you want like and you can do what you want for better or for worse don't spend your life living through celebrities or living for them know that they are entertaining you they are able to live eat have a sense of identity have a roof over their heads have people like care about them it's because you care about them okay and you care about them because they have qualities that already live inside of you honey know how to nurture those because that is so important nurture yourself recognize yourself and know what's valuable inside of yourself because that already exists there you just have to acknowledge it that's it for today i love you all so much you can find me on instagram under la princesse des beaux-arts and yeah i'll see you soon okay have a beautiful life bisous au revoir